Welcome tonight. Can see two of you. I still love me. I'm trying my best, but even now. If you are in the room, can you drop a comment? And let me know you're there when you join. Let me know you're there. Drop your name and say something in the comment. Welcome, 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 and drop a message in the comment box. Let me know you're there. How many guys are online tonight? Let me see you guys. Welcome. Can you wake them up on the group? Those that are still sleeping. I don't know what they are doing. It's 9 p.m. We have a lot to cover. Wake them up. Wake them up. All right, guys. All right. Good boys. Good evening, everyone. I love you guys. Welcome, welcome. We have six persons online now. No, I ain't good now. You still love me. Welcome, Kelvin. Welcome, Gift Shane. I can see you. Digital Palace. Welcome, CJ. All right, CJ. I can see you, Kennedy. You can drop your name so that I can call you by name. Esther, I can see you. Good vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. We're doing a lot tonight, so I want to just make sure nobody is missing out of anything. We'll give them like three minutes. You can help me wake them up. Anybody that is still seeing the world around you or anybody that is still gisting with, you know, I don't know who they are gisting with now, but anybody still gisting, can you wake them up, please? all right so if you have questions you can ask me while we are waiting so that i can answer you where is bbs bbs is always asking questions for someone is that bj cool where is bbs always asking questions for i don't know whether it's his girlfriend is asking questions for now or his wife or his friend i don't know <laughs> all right guys let's get started let's get started it's five minutes past nine welcome 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 we're looking at html today yeah we're gonna be treating the entire html tonight so guys get ready i hope your laptop is close by i hope your laptop is closed by you so because we are going through the entire html tonight tomorrow we're going to look at css probably entirely like 90 percent of css will be covered tomorrow so uh you guys need to you know carry your laptop and make sure you are ready like i told you in the group we're going to be designing together so this is going to go down right for most part of the 12 days that we are having for the most part of the 12 days that i'll be going through and we're going to be designing together on screen live coding so i'm going to design some things like for example i'm going to do google landing page together we're going to design facebook landing page together we're going to design linkedin landing page we're going to design instagram landing page right these four pages we are going to design together in the next two weeks or in the next 12 days right but this is what happens or this is going to happen i'm going to design it on a live stream like this but i will not share the code with you so 
the idea is that you will learn from what I'm doing and then you have to do it on your own and push to the repo. Is that fine? So you will, you will watch me do it. We will do it together. I will explain, you know, why I'm doing it. You will learn it. Then you have to do it on your own and then push to your repo. So everybody will create a branch on, their, on the repo of IT skills that I've added you to. If you have not been added and you are here tonight, make sure you drop your username, your GitHub username, so that we can add you up, right? Because for the entire 12 days, whatever assignment we give, you have to push to your branch on the repo. I will explain what I mean by your branch so that we can easily follow up and check out your assignments. So you're going to have to push to your branch. I will show you probably at the end of this stream how to create a branch of your own and how to push to your branch, right? Ade Wumi, welcome, welcome. We have just one minute for of waiting for people to join in. Esther, I don't know why you are smiling now. Is it that are just that you are smiling at? <laughs> All right. You still love me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, who else do I see there? Who are? Chooks. Chooks Moka, welcome. Baba Tunde Ade Wumi, welcome. All right, I think we can just start because I think um, as they join, some people are still, they are still cooking. They are cooking. I don't know what they are cooking now. They are, they are frying fish or they are, they are frying plantain. So, <laughs> so they will join us. They will join us when they are done frying their fish and eating fully, fully. Yeah, so it's going to be live coding. We are going to be live coding. Most of our, all the stuff we're going to work on is going to be live coding. You will learn from what I'm doing and then you will do your own on your own. So you have to pay attention while I'm doing it. So let's get started, right? Let's get started. All right, so tonight we're going to be looking at HTML. HTML. And HTML is simple. HTML means hypertext markup language, right? So let me push this to this side of the screen. Um, let me see if you guys can see it. Confirm that. Yeah, you can see that. All right. Right, so let me bump this up a bit. Um, too much. Uh, okay, let me just go full screen on this. Can I? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so guys, we're looking at HTML tonight, and um, I uh, will start with the introduction of what HTML is all about. So, for some people, it's not, it will not be new. But some it will be new, so let's just. So for those who uh, who this is not new to, just try and um, you know just behave as if this is the first time you are hearing about it, right? Behave as if this is the first time you are hearing about it. So just follow me. There are some things you will still pick up that probably you don't know before, but you know don't be bored. For for as many uh, people that are new to this, try to follow along. So what is HTML? HTML is the language of the browser, right? It's called hypertext markup language. Is the language that the browser understands. So when you want to talk to the browser, you want to tell the browser to do something, or you want to tell the browser to output some kind of content on the screen for the user to see, then you are going to be talking in HTML. Just the same way I'm speaking English right now, and you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, if I'm speaking English to the browser, I'm telling Chrome in English to do something, Chrome will not answer me, or Firefox, or Opera or any of the browsers. So the only language you understand is HTML and then some other languages. But HTML is what we're looking at tonight. So full meaning of HTML means hypertext markup language, right? Like I said, it's the language of the browser. It's written in tags. This is just story here. I'll move to the next one. The most important thing you have to know about HTML is the structure, right? The structure of HTML, which looks something like this, right? It looks something similar to what you are seeing right now. So you start with the opening tag, HTML, in those angle brackets, right? That's how you write it. And then within the angle bracket open and the angle bracket close, can you see this? So this is the angle bracket close, and this is the angle bracket open right here. So it's within those two brackets or within those two tags that all your HTML codes will be written. Is that clear? That's where all your HTML codes will be written. And what do you have within this opening tag and this closing tag? You have what we call the head and the body. In this structure, the head is not here, but I'm going to show you the head, right? But inside the body, 
is where the actual HTML code that will instruct the browser to do something will be written. So for example, on this screen, you can see inside the body, you can see an H1 tag, you can see a P tag, you can see a P tag. This P tag stands for paragraph. So anytime you want to tell the browser to output a paragraph on the screen, then you will use a P tag, right? If you want to output a heading or an heading or a heading, right, on the screen, you use an H1 tag. But there are different sizes of headings. You have H1, you have H2, you have H3, H4, H5, H6, right? H1 to H6, different sizes. We're going to look at that very pretty soon. So that's the structure of HTML. And HTML has evolved over the years, right? HTML has evolved over the years. We started with HTML in 1991. HTML plus in 1993, 2.0, 3.2, 4.0, up until HTML5 in 2012, and then XHTML5 in 2013. And they keep improving on it, right? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Chooks, I'm wondering why you're having a question mark. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Can you guys respond in the comments so I'm sure I'm not talking to myself? Maya, are welcome. I want you guys to respond in the comment box if you can hear me, if everything is clear, if everything is fine, you can see the screen, and we are good to go. All right, great. Cute script says everything is clear and fine. So I'm going to just move on, right? So we've downloaded some tools yesterday, especially Notepad++ and Visual Studio Code. Those are the editors that we'll be using to write our code, right? So like I was explaining that the headings for HTML comprises of H1 to H6, and they are meant for different sizes. We're going to look at that practical example soon, right? If you want to display a paragraph on the screen, you use a P tag. If you want to display an anchor, an anchor link means anytime you go to the, let's say, for example, let me see if I can. Um, um, so when you click the link, you clicked on Telegram, right? It was a link you clicked. To join the YouTube, uh, to come to this YouTube screen, that link that you click is called an anchor tag, right? How do you do that in HTML? Is this a tag, a href, right? We're going to look at all this in practicality very soon. If you want to add an image, if you want to instruct the browser to put an image on the screen, then you use the image tag. There are two types of tags. So far, we've seen what I call the opening and closing tag. So what I mean by opening and closing tag is that you have for example, the paragraph, you have the P tag open, and then you will have the closing tag with this slash, the backslash, right? So the one with the tag with the backslash is the closing tag, closing this P tag that is opening right here, right? So, but there are some other tags that are called self enclosing tags, self enclosing tags. An example of a self enclosing tags is the image. Right. If you look at this image, for example, even though it looks like an opening tag here, we don't have a second half of it, like the one with the backslash to close it. So what we have is that the image we open we will have some bit of properties or attributes, and then it will close itself with the backslash right here. Right. I'm going to show you pretty soon. So let's look at some of these examples. So I'm going to quickly share my, um, let me share my Visual Studio code now. Just a second. So that I can just quickly launch. Um, how do I launch these two screens together? Hmm. Okay, let me do this in, let me see if I can do this in. Um, um, where is that thing called? What's the name of that stuff that you use in coding on screen? Um, what was that thing called again? Oh, code pen, yes, code pen. Yeah, so I'm gonna use code pen so that we can see everything together in one place. All right, great. Um, can we see this? Is it is it clear enough? Uh, let me see if I can grab. So right here, I've explained that. Uh, let me see if I can zoom out a bit. I think it's too tiny. Um, is it a bit clearer now? 
I think it's a bit clearer, right? Yes, it is. I'm not doing JavaScript. Yes, minimize this. Minimize this. Okay, can I have this on the right? Um, do I grab this and put it on the right? Okay, can everybody see my screen now? Is it clear a bit? So I was explaining that the structure of HTML is HTML this way, right? HTML, then you have what we call the type, the head. The head we open, the head we close. You have the body, open and close, right? You have the open and close body. Then you have inside the body. That's where you type all your HTML code, right? So I believe it's, it's a bit clear. Let me open it up a bit more. So this is the basic structure of HTML, right? This is the basic structure of HTML. Uh, let me see if I can change this to this. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. So now this is the basic structure of HTML. You have the HTML tag open and close at the end. You have the head tag open and close. You have the body tag open and close, right? Inside the body tag, that's where all your HTML code will be written. And we've looked at an uh, H1, which is the heading with the big size. Right, adding with big size. So if you can see that, you can see adding with big size written on your browser. So this is like the browser, right? This is like the browser right here. So let me show you the second H2. You have the H2, this is a bit smaller than H1. And see that. So this is actually the way you write your code. You are actually typing h1 which is the heading the big heading which of the biggest of all the headings anyway the h2 is the second heading and then you add h3 you have h4 you have h5 you have h6 so i'm going to just put something in all of those so that you can see the different sizes if you have any question you can drop it within the chat box i will answer you so this is heading six it's probably the smallest this is adding five, right? This is uh, adding four. This is adding three. Yeah, so these are the different headings that you have in HTML, and it's that simple. So this is how you tell the browser to output headings, right? And the H1 is the biggest, H6 is the smallest. I believe that's pretty straightforward and clear. We talked about the paragraph, right? How do you tell the browser to output a paragraph? You use a P tag. And the P tag is a, an opening and a closing tag. So you are going to have the P open and then the P we close. How do you have the closing tag? It's just similar to the opening tag, but with a backslash. This backslash indicates that this is the closing tag. So I'm writing, this is a paragraph. Now we are already telling the browser to output a paragraph, a paragraph, right? Is that simple? Are you guys following me? Is this easy enough? For the new guys that are new to this, this is how you write your HTML code. If you have your laptop in front of you, I think you should just practice this now. You start with the HTML open tag. You are doing this on your, um, your Visual Studio code, right? You should be writing in your Visual Studio code. So you have the HTML open tag, HTML close tag at the end. Then you have the head open, the head close. I will explain what goes inside the head pretty soon. But inside the body tag, that's where you have all your HTML, the actual content that the browser will output on the screen. Everything is written in the body tag, right? So, and we've looked at headings. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a, a typo, right, Kenneth? That was a typo. So, um. In the, uh, in the headings, right, you have H1 to H6, different sizes. That's pretty clear. If you look at paragraph, then we looked at how to write an anchor reference. How do you prepare a link? A link is written as such. A, href, and then when I put an address here, so the href is, is called a property or an attribute of the href. 
every of an H all the HTML tag, they have different attributes or properties that you can, you know, assign values to. It will, it will give you an idea of what those properties are. But for now, the only one we'll be looking at is the href, which is the property of the A tag, the anchor tag. And the anchor tag allows us to link from one page to another or to link from one part of a page to another part of the same page or to link to a website, another completely external website. Do you understand? Everybody's following, right? So for example, I can link, um, how did that disappear? For example, I can link to, um, say for example, I can go to facebook.com from here. And then when I click on this link right here, because this is an anchor tag now, when I click on this, it's going to launch Facebook, right? Facebook refused to connect here. Yeah, so that's because I'm using uh, CodePen. They can't load Facebook inside this uh, place, right? But that is trying to connect to Facebook. That's how you write a link in HTML. Is that pretty clear? All right, so I'm going to go back to my editor. Um, let's go back one step. All right, so let's go back to our code base. So the next thing we want to look at uh, is how to write what we call an, um, a list. A list, how do you do a list? A list is simply when you want to say you have a list of items, say you want to define uh, a list of favorite food or a list of colors. Anytime you just want some set of lists, for example, they might be ordered lists, or on ordered list. This is how you do that in HTML. So if you are, so there are two type of lists, right? There is what we call the ordered list. There's what we call the unordered list. So let me show you the first one. The ordered list is defined like this. So you see the OL. The OL means ordered list. Ordered list, right? And within the OL, you now define the actual list that you want to list out. So let's say if I want to list out um, home. I'm listing out some menu items now about us, right? Um, what else do you have on the website? Say, for example, gallery. Uh, you go to the next item. Say, for example, contact us. So anytime you want to list out, you know, items like this, you can actually use a list like this. And because I used OL, OL stands for ordered list. Because I use OL, you can see that automatically the browser assigns some kind of ordering to it, which is one, two, three, four. So it's ordering the list. But what if I don't want it to have uh, numbers? I want it to have, it should be on order. There's no order to this list. Then you use what we call the UL. So I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. And then I will change it to UL. So UL stands for on ordered list. So let's look at the two now. So you can see the first one as one, two, three, four. The second one, bullet points. So the second one is an unordered list. Unordered. Let me spell that so that you can see that just right above here. I'm going to call it an H3 just for, just for um, this is unordered list. And then this one right here is um, ordered list. Right? This is ordered list, and this is on ordered list. So anytime you want a piece of ordering, you use ordered list. Anytime you don't want it to be numbered, use on ordered list. When we get to CSS, you will find out how to remove this numbering. You find out how to style it, how to make sure it's really good and all of that. Yeah, so let's move on. So we've looked at, let me do a recap. We are looking at HTML. We've looked at the way to start writing an HTML code is to start with the opening tag, the HTML opening tag, and the HTML closing tag. That is how to start writing HTML code, right? Probably every language you will meet, every language you will meet, you always have some sort of opening tag that you will use to start that language. So if you are writing PHP, there is a way to write, you know, you will write something like this in PHP to start it. You know, if you are writing XML, you write XML. If you are writing JavaScript, you start with script. So every language has some sort of opening to uh, an opening tag to indicate that you are actually starting to write that particular language. Do you understand? The same thing with uh, even CSS, you know, there is a way to start it. So that is it. Any questions so far at this point? Any questions so far for the anchor when putting the href? Are we adding 
an asterisk or not it's really not clear okay good esther let me go back to that anchor tag so you are not adding an asterisk if i if i get what you are asking there is no asterisk anywhere in the in the anchor tag the way you I write your anchor tag is you open an a tag right let me just open an a tag only so for example uh this goes to about page for example right this is an anchor tag all by itself this is an anchor tag all by itself the only thing that is missing in this anchor tag is indicating where the anchor tag should go to and the way to tell the anchor tag where it should link to is the attribute href href right is the attribute href so the href is what tells the anchor tag that when it is clicked on go to so 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 place so within that href within that empty quote that's where you will put the location that the anchor tag should go do you understand so there is no asterisk in uh, in any part or am i clear with your question for the anchor tag when putting the href are we adding an asterisk no you are not adding an asterisk you are not adding an asterisk this is the structure is it clear now this is the structure look at it very well this is the structure of the anchor tag the structure is simply you open the a ref uh, a, the a tag you close the a tag the test that should be displayed on the screen to the user for them to click will be written within the opening and closing tag for the a and then within the a the first opening tag you're going to have an attribute called href which is more like the reference the link where the link should go right within the href the open the um the open quotation there that's where you now specify you know the location go to a particular place right so when when they click on this let me change this test to go to my website go to my website so when i click on this now when i click on this now it's going to go straight to icskillcenter.com do you understand so that's how to do it uh, to write a link let's move on quickly because we are going to cover a lot tonight the next thing you want to learn quickly is how to add an image to your page how to add an image to your page so I'm going to scroll a bit down so that we have more space. So um, the next thing is to add an image. How do you add an image? I was explaining with the slide the other time that the image tag is a self-enclosing tag, right? The image tag is a self-enclosing tag, and it's written like this. IMG, then it will close itself. Don't write it like this. I, all the tags we've been looking at so far, they've been written like this, right? They close, they have the opening tag, and the closing tag but the image is not like that the image is a self and closing tag self and closing tag means that it opens and closes itself right it opens and closes itself by itself it does not uh, it does not have an opening tag and a closing tag is that clear so that is how to write how to tell the browser to put a uh, to put an image on the screen then how do you tell it the particular image now to put on the screen there is an attribute just like similar to the href the href for the anchor to add an image on the screen all you need to add is an attribute for the image tag called src src is the attribute that indicates the path to the image that should be displayed on the screen let me take uh, take that slowly i said for you to add an image on the screen what you need to do is to use the image tag right that's the first thing i've said you use the image tag but the image tag number one is not uh is not an opening and closing tag is a self-enclosing tag a self-enclosing tag is that tag that opens itself and closes itself by itself it does not have a second half right so how, the, how does it close itself it opens up and then you get this backslash right within the opening tag that is a self-enclosing tag i think that's clear enough right then after writing the image tag, how do you tell it what image exactly should display on the screen? Similarly to the um, the anchor tag, you know, we told the anchor tag where to go by using the href, the href property or the href attribute. The same way for the uh, image tag, you tell the image, the particular image it should display by putting the image in this attribute called src. src stands for source. src stands for what? Source. So I'm just going to look for an image on the browser now. Uh, let's quickly just go to Google. Sample image. Can someone give me their image there? Can you drop a link to your image on, 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 on where now? 
I need someone's image to be on this screen. Esther, I can read me. Can I find you on LinkedIn? I'm not sure this is the Esther I can read me anyway. Well, let's just grab this Esther here. Oh, this Esther said no gay image. Hey, Jesus. All right. So let's look for someone who is a valid human being on this uh, in, in our world, please. Um, I'm not sure this is our Esther. Our Esther is more sophisticated than this person. My Esther on this group has image on her LinkedIn. All right, let's look for a real human being. All right, so Collins, Collins is out of this group. Who has, can we have, okay, let me just look for any image. I would have loved that somebody give me a link of, of an image. Let's just grab any image on the internet, right? So I'm going to grab an image on the internet of um, background. All right, let's just grab this image. So I've gotten, to, I'm, I'm coming to YouTube to just grab the image URL. The image URL, are you guys still with me? If you're with me, I want comments in the box. I want comments in the box. So I'm gonna right click on this image. Can you see? I'm gonna right click on the image from uh, Google Images. I'm gonna right click on this image and then I'm gonna copy the image address. Copy image address. Copy image address, right? Assuming the image were to be on your system, then you would have um, you would have you know use the image location, the image path to the image on your system. But now I don't want to use the image on my system, so I went online, grabbed the image address of any image on the internet, or copied, then I will go back to my code location, and then I will paste it right within the source. And then once I paste it right there, I should get an image. Can you see it? Can you see our image? Can you see our image? All right. So we've done quite a lot already, right? I would love that you guys practice now. If you can practice, practice. I want you to try the uh, the the H1, the H1 to H6, right? Try to write your H1 to H6 in your own Visual Studio code. But if you are using Visual Studio code, right? Uh, maybe I should just give you this link so that you can try it right here because I didn't show you how to do it locally okay let me just show you how to do it on your system right because you are going to do it local and locally on your system so i'm going to share my visual studio code now uh, where's my uh, i'm just going to copy this so i want to show you how to quickly do this on your visual studio code right so i want to copy this and then go back and share my Visual Studio code. So I will show you how to do it on your own side. Let me show you how to do it on your system. So I'm going to share my Visual Studio code. Where is that? All right. So I'm sharing my Visual Studio code now. And then what that means is that this is how you should start on your system. So if you have Visual Studio code on your system, launch it. You should get this screen at first. Right? Can you all see my screen? I think you should be able to see my screen. Hello, guys. I need responses. Can you guys see my screen? I'm already sharing. What can you see on my screen, please? Can you confirm what you can see on my screen? Can you see Visual Studio Code screen? Can you confirm you can see the Visual Code screen? Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, great. So you guys can see my Visual Code screen now. So I wanted to explain how you do this locally on your system, right? So this is how you do it on your system. You will um, you will click on new file, click on new file, then it's going to open to you a new file, right? Then you start typing HTML, HTML. That is the structure of the code. HTML open and close. You have your head tag right then you have your body tag 
this is the structure the basic structure of html that's what i explained to you earlier yeah this is the structure of html so this is what you should have on your visual studio code right now you should practice it now do it with me now on your system maybe you just want to minimize my the youtube stream on one side and open your visual studio code on, on the other side minimize it to so that you can you can see the two screens at the same time right so inside your body tag that's where you start typing the html code so you want to type h1 and type something there adding one right and do this for up until six h2 h3 h4 h5 you know h6 i'm just duplicating right now that's what i'm doing i'm duplicating so that i'll be fast because of time h4 h3 um h4 h3 and h2 so once you've done all of this right you will press ctrl s on your keyboard to save or oh, somebody's asking what is visual studio code that means you just joined samuel samuel you just joined so you should download visual studio code we downloaded all the um all the tools we needed yesterday so if you're just joining us um i want you to download visual studio code right now uh check the group uh check the group and then download get the link to visual studio code and download you can check some of the pins on the group on telegram and download visual studio code let me move on so i was talking about after typing the basic html structure and typing h1 to h6 i want you to press ctrl s to save yes i see it but not clear okay i can i will increase my my i will increase the sizes just now in a second i want to show you how to save this is very important so that you can run it in the browser so press ctrl s to save right press ctrl s to save and then once you save give it a name give it a name i'm going to call my foundation 101.html foundation 101.html right then you will try to know try try to identify the location where you are saving it for me i'm going to save it on my desktop i'm going to save it on my desktop so know where you are saving the file press save and then it's going to be saved right i'm going to zoom out a bit so that people that can't see can see clearly I think it's a bit clearer now, right? So I said the basic structure of HTML is this. And then what we have inside that basic structure is just H1 to H6, which gives us the different sizes of headings, right? H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Is that clear? Is everyone with me? Kelvin, Adode, can you see my screen? Esther, can you see this? And have you done this on your side? I want you to do this, or you can watch the video later and do it. So I'm going to press Ctrl S to save. Then after saving like this, what you want to do is to go to your desktop. Don't forget that I saved my foundation 101.html on my desktop, right? So I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to double-click on this file, foundation 101.html. You see that you double-click on it, or you right-click and open with Chrome. When you right-click on the file, you will see open with just mouse over that open with so let me show you that because i'm on a, i'm on a macbook i might not be able to show you exactly what it looks like on a windows uh a windows pc but let me just show you what it looks like to run this now in your browser uh, i'm going to go to my i'm going to stop sharing and share the browser let me just share my my system quickly uh my window right so let me see where is that where is that where is that let me just quickly share my entire screen and then i can so i'm going to share my screen now so that you can see my system briefly just to see my system all right so look at my desktop so i'm going to go to my desktop here so i'm going to launch my finder on my system i will go to desktop then i will look for foundation 101 i'm going to look for foundation 101 foundation all right so this is my file here foundation 101 all i need to do is right click open with and then you will see google chrome in your own case i'm sure it should be similar to this on windows locate that file you just saved from your visual studio code on your desktop locate it on your desktop from your windows explorer right click on it go to open with and then you will see google chrome as one of the options right if you have other browsers like opera firefox we also see them click on google chrome and then it will launch google chrome 
right? So you launch Google Chrome for you. So you launch Google Chrome, and then you should see uh, you should see your page on the screen. Uh, my own is saying access denied. Uh, yes, I can't actually do this because um, I'm on a MacBook. I will have to put it in my. I have to use local host to access this, right? So I will show you how to do that. Uh, let me move this file. I'll just copy it now. I'll copy it, take it to my... So this is quite different on the Windows, but let me try as much as possible to see if I can explain it the way it would be on Windows. So for my case, I'm going to take it to my ZAMP. That's why you install ZAMP the other day, right? So in my case, my ZAMP is installed in applications. In your case, it should be your C drive. So launch your, um, your Windows Explorer, go to your C drive, on a MacBook is applications. Go to your C drive, right? Then when you go to C drive, you will see ZAMP, right? You will see ZAMP. So in my case, it's called MAMP. But in your case, you will see ZAMP. So double click on your ZAMP. When you double click on ZAMP, you will look for HT Docs. Look for HT Docs. HT Docs, you will see it inside ZAMP, inside C drive, your C drive, right? Double click on HT Docs. And then inside HT Docs, you can paste the foundation 101 there. So I'm going to paste it here, foundation 101. Once you've pasted that, then in your browser, just change to local host. That will now allow you to local host, right? And then if you launch, voila, you can see that my screen just lit up. So you should be able to run it like this. Or your, in your case, just do local host slash local host slash foundation 101 local slash foundation 101.html your code should come up immediately let me run over what i've just said again the first thing we have done right is to the first thing we did was to write our code in visual studio code right html open and close head open and close body open and close then we have a sample html code h1 to h6 right H1 to H6. Then we press Control S to save. Control S to save. Then when we saved, we saved in on the desktop prior, prior to now. But I now moved it from desktop to my ZAMP. And ZAMP is located in your C drive, ZAMP HT Docs. Do you understand that? ZAMP C drive HT Docs. Is that clear? That's how you do it on your system. So let me go back. To where we were doing this before so i'm going to stop sharing now and go back to the one i was using online so that i will not be sharing my entire screen all right so that's how you do it locally so anything i'm writing now in this part of the screen uh someone said why saving that's esther uh, i saved mine to desktop yes so you need if you save it on the desktop i think it should still work on windows it's because i'm on a macbook that's why it didn't work so if you saved on the desktop there's no even need to move it to your ZAMP, really, because on a Windows, you don't have permission issues like MacBook, right? So just right-click on your Windows, um, locate the file on the desktop on Windows, right? And right-click on it. Right-click on it and open with Chrome. And it will open. Your code should run. You can try that right now. So for Esther asking, why saving? Should we save as plain text or HTML? Yes, you are going to save as .html, not as plain text dot html you must have the extension so give it a name whatever name you want to call it dot html that is when it will run are we clear on this can we are we together can i move on so we've looked at the headings we've looked at uh we've looked at um um paragraph we've looked at the anchor tag for uh for links we've looked at ordered lists we've looked at on ordered lists and we've looked at image how to add an image to your code. So at this point, I want to confirm you guys are following me so that I can continue. The next thing we want to do is how to make a text very bold. So I'm going to just remove everything I have so far on the screen so that I can um, I can add more code. So how do I do that? There's something called comment in HTML. You can comment out your code. Commenting means that the browser should ignore that particular piece of code, right? So if you want to turn... If you want to turn something into comments, uh, let me uh, bump this up a bit more. I think it's big enough. Uh, let me see if I can uh, if I can still increase it though. All right. So can you all see this now? 
Uh, let me see if I can change the font size. Mm, I don't think I can. I think this is the biggest study. They are the highest it can be. All right. But you guys can see my screen. Your screen is not clear. Um, which of the screens are you referring to now? Is it the current screen I'm, I'm on or another screen? Which screen am I on? Or which screen is not clear? All right. So as I was saying, um, let me move on to making this thing very bold. So the next tag we want to look at is um, some little things like um, making something very bold on the screen, right? So I'm going to go and write a B tag. A B tag. A B tag is meant for making something bold, right? So this is bold, bold text, right? And I write a text like this and I put it inside the B tag. It's going to make that text very bold. Uh, you can see it down here, but let me, I, okay, I was explaining something about comments. I think I'm jumping ahead of myself now. Let me explain comment again, because I want to use comment to remove and hide all these previous codes on the screen so that we can see the new ones I'm writing. So if you want to add comments to your code, all you need to do is go to the beginning of where you want the comment to start from. You open the tag, you have an exclamation mark, you have a double dash, and then that's how you start to add a comment to your code. So everything from here up until where I have this, look at it, where I have double dash and a closing angle bracket. Everything now is comment out. So you can see it, everything is now grayed out. So that means the browser will ignore everything from this point all the way to this point. Everything will be ignored by the browser. And as you can see, only my bold test now is showing on the screen. Only my bold test is showing on the screen. Is that clear? Only my bold test is showing on the screen. Can you see that? Is it clear? All right, I think that's clear. So I'm gonna move on to another element or any another tag on the screen now. Let me just look at, um, let me just look at quickly to get a sense of, uh, another tag. Hold on a second. All right, good. So I will share this with you guys. Is uh, an HTML cheat sheet. An HTML cheat sheet is just a file that contains probably everything, all the HTML tags you will ever have. So I believe it's clear enough. So I'm just going to run through to see. So we've treated paragraph. We've treated the HTML structure. Yes, let's look at how do you break a statement. So, for example, we've been looking at paragraphs so far. So, look at this example for here, from here. So, I have a paragraph. We've looked at paragraph. This is a paragraph. This is another paragraph or another line, right? I just wrote two things. It was the previous screen. Okay, okay, great, awesome. So, look at what I have on the screen now. I just wrote this is a paragraph and this is another line. There are two sentences in this paragraph, but I want to break the other one down. Yes, great, awesome. Esther, the whole work immediately you save on the desktop. That's awesome, right? So you want to break something from one line to the next line. You use a tag called break. You will use a tag called break. And how do you put the break? It's just open the angle bracket, BR right and then it breaks to the next line can you see that it's very simple and easy very very simple and easy so the break tag is used in breaking a statement from one line to the next line in html do you see that so if you, if you have a paragraph and you want to push something to the next line then you will use the break tag br is the tag br is the tag so you can use that in your code to test it out right now. BR is the tag. I want you to write, just quickly create a paragraph, type any statement inside, and then somewhere in the statement, put a BR tag and save and refresh your browser. Save and refresh your browser. And you will see this BR, which um, the line will break to the next line. If you have done that, just let me know in the comment box that you have done it. 
Let me look at another tag we can look at quickly. We've looked at the ULLIs, the ordered list, the unordered list. We've looked at um, the H1s. Okay, another tag we can look at quickly is the HR. The HR is another tag that allows you to just draw a line on the screen. HR stands for horizontal line. So HR, if I have my HR like this, it's going to draw a line on the screen. Can you see that? Can you see that? You have this line on the screen, right? So that is the work of HR. It's just meant to draw a line on the screen. Can you see it's beautiful, right? That's an HR tag, and it's very simple. Let me look for another tag I can explain to you or show you. We've looked at links. We probably must cover that or probably much everything. So the last part we want to look at quickly before we go for tonight, we have about 10, 15 minutes more um, to cover this entire HTML thing. You can see it's very simple. HTML is actually very simple. I, we, we, we've just learned HTML in, in less than an hour and people are already practicing. So if you don't have your laptop, I want you to, you know, um, I want you to watch this video again and practice on your own with your laptop. You learn coding by coding. You don't learn coding by watching. If you keep watching videos without practicing, you are not learning how to code. You actually learn how to code by writing the codes in your, on your, from your side. All right, so let's take a look at the, the, the next part of things, right, which is the forms. The forms. We'll be looking at forms quickly. So what are the forms meant for, right? You, you remember that anytime you visit a website and you want to feel, uh, say, for example, when you were trying to apply for this boot camp, there was a form that you filled, right? That form comprises of uh, input boxes, drop downs, and all of that. So we're going to quickly look at forms. So when you want to receive um, information from the user, you want to accept user inputs, then you will have to introduce forms in your code. And there are different kinds of form elements, right? But for any form you are designing, all the form elements must reside inside the form tag. And this is how you start it, form and then form. So you have the opening tag and you have the closing tag for the form, right? And everything you're going to be writing for the form elements now, all the form elements, all the input field, the select drop downs, everything you are writing will be inside the form tag, right? So I'm going to start to introduce to you the very first form elements called the input fields, right? Okay, yeah, let me, gonna, let me drop the, uh, the cheat sheet with you so that you can use it as a guide on your side. I'm going to drop it in the chat box now, quickly. Uh, I'm going to post it in the chat box. All right, so it's there on the chat box. You guys can use it. So back to the code. I said we want to introduce the first form element. It's called the input, the input field, right? And it's written like that. It's a self-enclosing tag. With the input field, the users now can type their name. You can receive users' inputs with the input field. Is that clear? That's very clear. But how will the user know exactly what to type in that input field? So that means that there must be some kind of label that describes to the user that, okay, what you should type in there is your first name or your last name or your middle name or your phone number, right? So I will introduce you to the next form element called the label, the label. The label allows you to just put some kind of indication behind an input field to tell it that, okay, what the user should type there is their first name. Can you see that? Awesome. Esther, you are blazing. You are blazing with fire, right? You're just getting everything right. Who else is doing this right? I want to see. Uh, I can see someone there. I can see Abel. I can see uh, Samuel. I can see who else is doing this. Beastly King, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing your chat again. Uh, Sida, Kelvin, Gift. Where is Gift? Gift, Gift, Chigo. You started with us. I can't see you again. Are you there, Kelvin? I want to see you. Killed Script. I want to see you, guy. Isaac. I want to see you. Are you doing this? Are you following through, Kenneth? Ikena. Are you guys there? All right. So this is how you receive users' input, right? First name inside the label and then input is where the user will type the actual information so for example the user can type their first name here and then if you want to you know collect the last name you can simply type another label let me introduce a break i told you about break break will break into the next line then i can introduce another label 
and call it last name, right? Call it last name, and then receive another input, another input box. So now I have two boxes to receive user's input. Can you see how beautiful that and simple that is? Can you see it's very easy? That is how you receive the user's input. So now quickly, what we're gonna do next, right, is to look at the different kind of, you know, input boxes that you can have. The different kind of input boxes that you can have. Right now, so far, what we just have is that you can receive a single piece of information like first name, like last name, you know, just a single piece of information. What if I want to receive, uh, my, my screen is not clear. Uh, are you sure it's not your internet that is fluctuating? Because I think YouTube will kind of readjust your quality, your, your, your streaming quality automatically based on your internet bandwidth because I've not changed my, my screen size so far. So you want to probably see if your YouTube is what is adjusting your quality, right? So let me continue. So I was talking about the different type of input boxes that we have, right? So we have various kinds of input boxes. For example, we have, let me go to the, the cheat sheet so that we can show you the input boxes. So you can look on the left here, right? You can look on the left here. There are different kinds of input boxes. There is input type email. There is input type URL. So that means that if you want to receive a URL um, of a website from the user, you will specify the type of that input box to be URL. If you want to receive an email from the user, you will specify the input type to be email. If you want to receive numbers from the user, you will specify the input type to be number. If you want to receive dates, dates from the user, you specify any of these options. You can either call it type dates, so let me just show you this so that I'll, I'll not just keep blowing grammar. Let me show you. So for example, we want to receive, I'm going to break to the next line, and I want to receive the date of birth of somebody. Date of birth, right? I'm going to say input type date. And then I'm going to close the tag. So when I click on this, let's see what this guy will do. So you can see it. So because I just wrote type date, then the input type changed and then i can select a date picker automatically from the browser you see how amazing that is awesome so that is how to do that right so let's say for example you want to receive an email from the user i'm going to break again i'm going to put a label right i'm going to ask for the email of this user right then the input type now for email will be email is that clear so for email, you won't really see anything, but if I type anything in here now, you can see it's already suggesting for my email dropdown. But if I type anything here that is not an email, the system will reject it, but that will only show up when I try to submit anyway. But that's how to receive type email. You can have type number, you can have type phone, you can have type date. So you see all this, just, just check your cheat sheets, right? You see all the different kind of input fields that you can have. Input type search, Input type color, input type month, type week, type time, input type checkbox. So I'm going to explain checkbox and radio button quickly, right? Let me explain input type checkbox and input type radio. So anytime you want to receive users' input, but you want them to select between two options, right? You want them to, this is supposed to be type email so that people will not get confused, right? So anytime you want to receive users' input, say for example, gender, you want to ask your, your users to supply their gender, male or female. These days it's like five options, male, female. I prefer not to say um, I'm this, I'm that. Anyway, for, for the purpose of this class, we just have male and female. So let me break to the next line and then I want to put a label for gender. So we want to receive gender from our users, gender from our users. So when you want to receive gender, you want them to pick between two options, male or female, right? Anytime you want your users to select from a predefined list of options, then you can introduce what we call a radio button. Let me say that again. Anytime you want your users to pick only one option out of your preferred options, then you use a radio button. And how do you do that? I can say input type radio, right? Input type radio, and then I will now write mail, 
Then I'll go to the next line. Input type radio. I will close the radio button and then I'll put female. You can see that. So that's how you do it. So now we have two radio buttons. Have you seen this on any form before? So the users can tick, can tick, can tick, right? But ordinarily, it should not allow me to tick both of them. So how do you have, how do you you know enforce that you can only select one? How do you do that? There is another attribute of this input tag. Don't forget that this type here is an attribute of the input tag, right? Just similar to the source for the image, similar to the source. Remember the source for the image. The source, the SRC, is an attribute for image. Remember the href for the anchor tag. The href is an attribute for the image. The same thing right here. This type that we are using here is an attribute for the input, right? So there's another attribute called name. So name for an input box, for an input uh, element, is what allows the browser to know that, okay, this is the name of this input box. So I'm going to give this gender, and I'm going to give this one also gender. So when because I've given them the same name now, the browser is able to know that, okay, this input box is type radio. The name is gender. This input box is type radio. The name is gender. That means that the user can only select only one of the two. That is how you do it. So when you give your radio buttons the same name, then the browser will ensure that the user can only pick only one. So let me try to tick again now. Can you see it now? Unlike before, when there was no name, it was able to, uh, the user was able to select both male and female. But now, when I click on this, it switches. When I click on this, it switches. When I click on this, it switches. Can you, are, you, are you following me? Are you guys there? So I wanted to practice that also. Practice that right now. The next one you want to do is that sometimes you want your user to pick from... Uh, they can pick more than one option. Say, for example, they want to select their favorite color. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to break here again and, and do select favorite uh, color, for example. Then, because they can select more than one color, right? Select favorite colors. Let me put plural. So anytime you want your user to select more than one option, then you will use an input type called checkbox. Checkbox. So let me show you that input type, input type checkbox. That input type is called checkbox. And then I can say this is white. This is white. Then I can break to the next line and say, uh, let me just, um, I want to copy this whole line with Ctrl C. I, I highlighted the whole line. I press Ctrl C on my keyboard. I come to the next line, I will just press Ctrl V, Ctrl V, Ctrl V, Ctrl V. So I want the user to be able to select, so I'm gonna break here also so that it can all come to the next line. And then I will just use, I will highlight everything here, and then I will um, use my tab to bring it back one step. The tab is that key above your caps lock, your caps lock on your keyboard, the tab, you just press tab, and then it should come back, right? So I'm going to list this as yellow, blue, um, pink, orange. So these are the colors, uh, the color options available to the user, right? So now we've listed, we've told the user uh, to select favorite colors, right? So and because we've used type checkbox and not a radio button, the user can select more than one option under the checkbox. So you can just tick. You can tick, you can tick. Amazing. Amazing. The last I item or two one, two more elements I want to show you is what we called, say for example, because the user can select more than one option here, there are some situations like where you want the user to pick from a country. Like you want the user to select his country, his or a country. How do you do that? You want the user to select country. You know that the countries of the world, there are a lot of uh, countries in the world. So that's a very long list. There is no way to list that with a checkbox or a radio button. It's going to be very long. That introduces us to the next element called the select options. And it's written like this, select option, select option. So it's, it's uh, a closing and opening tag, select, right? So you have the select open, the select close, and in between those two select, you have the option. 
It's also opening and closing. Then you can have a list of all the countries of the world. So let me put a label first, just to identify that this is to select a country. So I'm going to do select country, and I'm going to close the label, right? And then within the select option, you can then list all the countries of the world that you want the user to pick from, right? So that is how to do it. So Nigeria, Ghana, I can copy and just paste. So, it, but in your case, you can actually just list the countries of the world, right? So Ghana, United States, um, which other country is there? Uh, Kenya, Namibia, you know. So you can have all the countries of the world listed out. And then if you come to this page now, your browser, when you refresh your browser, what you should get is something like this, where the user can pick from a list. I think you have seen this on the screen before, right? I've seen this in, um, you have seen this uh, in, in forms, right? When you are filling forms, you have seen this drop down that allows you to pick from the list. So we've come to the end uh, of the class. I think the only thing I'm missing right now is a test area, right? When you want to, so if you notice that so far, the boxes that we have up here, they are very tiny. So when you want to type your first name, you can type your first name, you can type your last name, you can type your email, you know, you can type your email, you can pick whether you are male or female, you can pick your date of birth, you know, you can pick your colors, you have filled the form and you can select your country. So the last thing or two things we want to add is that you want the person to write a brief bio about themselves. So you can't possibly allow the user to be typing very lengthy information in this small input box. So what you want to do is that there is an element called text area. Text area is this box, is this input box that is bigger than the normal input box. So it allows you or it gives the user a bigger room for him to type something, you know, more lengthy. You can see it. I can even expand it. You can say I can expand it. So here, I can put a label. I'll put a break. I'll put a label and I'll put... I will tell the user to type a brief bio. Tell us about yourself. So when you are receiving such information like this, tell us about yourself. When the user will be typing something lengthy, then you can use a test area for something like that so that the user can type something really long. So here now, the user can type, I am teaching in class and it's awesome because everyone, because everyone, uh, everyone is learning HTML. You can see that I can type, you know, I can type in there. Isn't it beautiful? Now you've learned HTML in one day. The last thing is that you need a button to actually submit this form. So I'm just going to introduce you to the last element called buttons, right? Button. And button is simply written as button. Here I can put save changes or submit or anything like that. So you have a full form that can be submitted by this user now. So if I scroll down, you have save changes. So this can be submitted. You can see. So now it's submitted. So that is it. That is it. That is it. That's it. So I've come to the end of our HTML class for today. All you need to do is to practice, practice, and practice. Right? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? 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 So you guys can ask now before we close the class for today. So this is how HTML works, right? We've looked at, but I'm going to do a recap. The basic structure of an HTML, uh, HTML page is HTML open, HTML close. Everything that you're writing must go within those two tags. Then within those two tags, you have another, ta another tag called body. Another tag is called body. Within the body tag is where you will write all your HTML code, within the body tag, right? Then we, we looked at H1 to H6, which are the headings. We looked at paragraph. We looked at anchor tags, which is the AHREF, right? That can allow us to link from page to page or to an external page. We looked at ordered list. We looked at unordered list. We looked at an image, how to add an image to the page, right? Which is just the image IMG with an SRC source attribute. And then the path to the image. We use an image on the internet. We looked at a paragraph with a break. BR is that tag that you use to break something to the next line, and we reuse that over and over within our form. We looked at an HR, which is a line, allows us to draw a line on the page. 
Then we looked at a form. A form is just that tag that allows us to receive users' information or users' input. We looked at a label that allows us to tag every input field that we have, right? And we looked at a different type of input fields. We have the type test, which I did not really put here. By default, every input field is type test, right? It's type test. So we have the type test. Uh, we have the type date. We have the type email. You can have type phone. I can change this to phone, for example, so I can just put in type phone here. Type phone. All right. So we have type phone, type date, type email, type radio, type checkbox. Then we have select drop down that allows us to, you know, pick from a list of options. We looked at a test area and we looked at a button. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. I think it's been awesome and very exciting. Um, if you have enjoyed it, you can drop a comment in the box. And if you have not subscribed, click the subscribe button now so that you will always get updates and information about, you know, when we are going live and other information we are sharing. So subscribe to this channel now, like now. Now, 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 click the subscribe button below the screen. And if you have not followed us on Instagram, please do. On Twitter, on LinkedIn, do that also. And don't forget, most important, like I said, this next 14 days or next 12 days, you can see how exciting and easy this is. The next 12 days, we are learning for free HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I'm going to be teaching it like a, uh, uh, as simple as it can be for a beginner. I believe all the beginners there can follow through on this, even though if you, if you don't practice, you might easily forget this. So practice. But for those who are new to this, I want you guys to help me share and share the flyer with your friends that are interested in learning programming. Let this be, be their getting started classes. It's free for the next 12 days. Let them use this. Even though they don't um, get into the bootcamp, at least they can learn HTML, CSS for free. You know? So that's it. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I think there are no questions. Everybody is happy. I can see well done. I'm following. Oh, Akwa. <laughs> be me, I see you. Balaji, be me. Awesome. All right, so I believe you guys have practice on your system and you are getting it. If you have any questions, you can drop it in the Telegram group uh, and then we'll answer you for like 15 minutes before we shut down the uh, Telegram group for tonight. Like I said, please help us share this with your friends. Subscribe on our social media channels. And tomorrow, we will go to CSS straight up. Tomorrow, we are going to CSS. Tomorrow, we are going to CSS. It's going to be fun. So HTML literally is the, uh, the skeleton part of your, or your your page, your website is the skeletal part, is the structure, is the layout. It's not always beautiful. You can see how ugly this page is. But CSS is the beauty, is the aesthetic, is what you add to your website to make it very, very fine. So you're going to learn how to add beauty to your website tomorrow. So this same page or another page, we're going to start designing with CSS tomorrow. So we're going to learn CSS tomorrow, everything about CSS tomorrow. And for the subsequent days, we're going to be doing practical examples. We're going to design Google landing page. We're going to design Instagram landing page. We're going to design LinkedIn landing page. We're going to design Facebook landing page. I mean, I on Facebook, right? Facebook, Instagram, the four giants. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, there's one more. I can't remember the last one now. But we're going to design four landing pages together and live coding together, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Share with your guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Love you guys.